Hello and welcome. I'm Nafe42 and this is just a quick update for TrueNAS Scale. Okay, so TrueNAS Scale, as you can see here, has just been updated to 2106, meaning it is 2021, and it's the two, uh, it's the uh, May June. Uh, June beta one version of the software. So this came out uh, literally. Uh, it came on the twenty second, I think, actually. So I think it was a day late, to be fair. But twenty one oh six. This is the latest version. It's been up for two days for me, and it is the twenty fourth today. So yeah, I updated it as soon as it came out. Pretty much, it has been out for two days. So yeah, as you can see, uh, this looks a bit more. Uh, this looks a bit better. Uh, the uh, CPU is actually being picked up this time. I think it might have been last time, but the time before that it was not being picked up properly. Uh, you have your interface and your pool as standard here. The storage, this part hasn't really changed, but apparently the, um, the uh, what do they call it? The permissions for this have been improved greatly. This is a little bit different looking now. So you can see that they have actually got um, this laid out differently, but the SMBs are apparently set up and you can use UCLs now. I think that was one of the big differences. Um, I will go over that in a little bit as well because I do have the tab up with the updates. Uh, we have data protection. This is the same as always, but it does actually show you now that at 12 o'clock on Sundays, um, your vault or your drive will do a scrub which is basically where it cleans up the uh, the bad parts of the drive or whatever and just tries to keep it nice and smooth running very useful very good for the drives we have network this is the same as always I think I can't I can't notice any massive changes here under credentials uh, I think there might have just been uh, improvements uh, like back-end improvements on there nothing nothing visual virtualization I've not touched before and I don't know really if I can with only eight gigabytes of RAM um, applications so they have updated the next cloud app I think it happened either today or yesterday uh, a new version was pushed and finally we have what we want we finally have the ability to add extra drives to Nextcloud. So if you do this, you can go upgrade here. This is what I did uh, maybe an hour ago. And then after that, you can go edit and you can scroll down on this side. Um, and you will see here, configure Nextcloud extra host path volumes. And what this does is it will allow you to, to just like type in mount documents. Then you can click on the plus here and you can find your document folder on your drive and your media photos on your drive and now you can pull all of that stuff in it's also got a dns configuration at the bottom down here i've not looked into that yet but i'm hoping it allows you to add uh, ssh very easily to the system which would be uh, quite useful because i do use um that kind of stuff on here i i have a uh, technically publicly facing uh, cloud, I guess, or my my own cloud, my oh, I shouldn't say own cloud, it's a different one. My next cloud, uh, and that is um, able to be visited from across the web. Um, I have this. Uh, these are all my Docker's, so my Docker's did pull across, which is good. So I've got my Jellyfin, I've got my. Uh, Pi we go, which I've not actually used to be fair. Um, I've got Nginx, which is a web server, and I've got Transmission, even though I don't use Transmission anymore. So I could probably get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, and there was a different one actually. What do I use instead? I use. Um, oh, there's a couple of different uh, N -cloud, uh, N clouds. Uh, a Jellyfin. Apparently there's updates available for some of these, like Jellyfin, Core DNS, and Qubit Torrent. Qubit Torrent. Linux server, if you look at this GCH, uh, ghcr.io slash Linux server, you can get loads of really good Docker containers from there, which are very customizable, very customizable uh, and that makes it very useful when you're trying to set up stuff onto the server, actual applications kind of wise. Um, I have a very small server here. This is just a... Eight gigabytes of maximum RAM, so up to a maximum of sixteen. So I do want to get it the upgrade at some point. Um, but then again, it's only a AMD Turion two, 
Neo N54 dual core, dual core processor. It's a dual core processor, guys. It is getting, it runs pretty warm. I'll be honest. It runs around about 63 uh, to 80 degrees most of the time, um, and that's probably not good for it. But it does the job, and uh, soon when we move, we can stick it underneath the stairs, and it will not. Um, cause much of a ruckus to us whatsoever so we have here under reporting the cpu you can see the cpu usage and i mean this is basically a one-man server here so this is a server for me um basically and my file storage um i like having it on a nas server because it means that it's accessible across the network uh and also across the web for me uh, as long as i'm ssh or whatever Hopefully that will be the the future anyway. Um, and yeah, I, I, it's a good it is a good system. I do like Trina's scale. It's very good. So if we look at the um, updates quickly, we have the next update should be coming out. And I think it might be a um, another beta. I can't remember what they said exactly now, but um, yeah, I think and I think it was in September. I, I did read somewhere. Now, don't, uh, uh, here we go. Support for clustered uh, SMB access will be available in August with scale 2108. 2108 will be the next one coming out. So that is in another two months time. So I guess, yeah, it seems to be every two months that they're bringing one of these out. This is 2106. Uh, and yeah, so that, that's, this is just the article for it. SMB ACL, so yeah, they, put, they brought that in. That's good. Third-party applications can either be deployed as Docker containers or uh, True Charts. True Charts has got a lot better this time uh, with the uh, functionality of that uh, Nextcloud going going good, because obviously Nextcloud does require a couple of different things, and that's why I didn't want to do that as just a Docker image, because Nextcloud requires Nextcloud. It requires Postgre, which is a S MySQL server or a SQL server. Uh, and I think core DNS as well. Uh, now, they want to do it in this way, which allows you to cluster it or scale it up, which is the whole idea of the system uh, for the big for the big boys anyway, which is to have the ability to use multiple machines, uh, push the same systems, and also share the load between all three of them. That's the idea, I think, behind this, which is why it's like converged compute and can store capacity, conformance, scale out ZFS, all this kind of stuff. Linux containers and virtualization, which is Docker K8s and Kubernaut's and uh, KVMs, which is uh, the virtualization part. Um, for me, this is mainly the part that I care about anyway. Uh, there's going to be oh, GPU pass-through fields are apparently in the UI as well now, so that's good. Um, so eventually, when I maybe either get a graphics card for this machine or most likely upgrade it to a slightly bigger machine with a bit more power behind it and hopefully uh, just as little power usage and consumption uh, I will look to see if I can do that so that it can stream 4k to my TVs quite well um, I wouldn't be having a 4k TV downstairs just yet um, but once we move in and get the house all sorted maybe we can start thinking about doing that at some point eventually in the future so yeah, there's quite a few little bug fixes and, and changes that have done to this. Um, and, you know, they've done a lot. They've, there's been a lot of progress, especially since last time. Uh, I was going to say before, because I, I was going to do this video yesterday, but if I did, it wouldn't have had the big update for um, for Nextcloud. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I did wait for another day before I did that. Um, so, yeah, as for everything else, it seems fairly stable. Uh, I've been using the other one, uh, 2104, for, well, the, obviously the two months since it was in 04, uh, and that was very good. That was nice and, and very solid to use. I really did enjoy the fact that you can just put it in and you can just play, and you can just, you know, um, well, plug and play, I guess, not put it in play. Uh, I have since switched the USB stick out, which was the one powering the operating system, for a um for a usb to uh m2 sata sata m2 dongle um 
I can post a picture up of that or do more information about that if you guys would like. Um, but I mean, that's pretty much it, to be honest. It's it's an M2 um, SSD that's plugged into my server through the USB port, and that is my boot drive. Um, so they recommend using uh, that you can use USB, but you shouldn't use um, a USB stick or a thumb drive anymore, or even an SD card, because they're not as reliable as SD uh, as SSDs or hard drives. So that is uh, fundamentally what you should want to do if you are still using a USB stick. Uh, if you need any advice with that, comment down in the section below, and I will get back to you. Uh, but finally, here is Nextcloud. So Nextcloud, okay, so following on from what we saw on the previous bit where I had the apps, I'll just show you how this all links up. Um, so you go install applications. I'm gonna go to the little three dots, edit. And you can do this while it's running. Actually, it's fine to do that. Um, you can configure Nextcloud extra host path volumes and you can just type so this is the mount path uh, on the container and this is the one on your server so basically you just want to type in here mount documents which is kind of like a standard way of saying this is an external thing you don't have to put in documents you could just put it in forward slash documents if you really want but I, I like to try and keep some sort of file structure going so mnt documents will have the documents mnt photos will have the photos and if you look on here now photos under external storage we don't need to worry about this part anymore because it's not mounting a samba or sorry not samba god damn it's not samba really. an smb client um it's mounting directly from its own storage so it's it's a local thing um and yeah so photos will be mn forward slash don't forget the forward slash the one at the front forward slash mnt slash photos and then documents will be slash mnt slash documents uh click the tick and then you can also uh with some of the, the things on here change who is allowed to see them or not uh, and now you can just go into your files go to external storage and then you can see documents and photos and the documents has my actual documents so yeah there you go um now obviously i'm gonna have to cut a bit of this stuff out because this is my documents, it's my personal stuff. And uh, yeah, there is that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. I don't really think from Twitter. I'm very excited for the next version of this. Uh, let me know if you are too. And I'll see you in the next one.